Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel called Shermio and today in this demonstration of the video I'm gonna show you how you can actually run a different EKS node groups for your workloads for scheduling your pods and inside your EKS. So as you can see I'm currently have an active status cluster in the Kubernetes version 1.25. It's a basic, very basic test cluster, it, nothing production is running on and it's not even have a single node right now it's running. It's a, I'm just using a public VPC, I don't recommend anyone to use a public VCP, VPC, everything should be in private and also the API server, try to make it private for your Kube API server so that it ha don't have any public access to it. So without wasting any time, i will just gonna provide a little uh, information about EKS nodes. So Amazon EKS supports three different types of your workloads for the node groups. So you can actually schedule your ports on any combination of a self-managed node or the Amazon EKS managed nodes and the AWS Fargate. We're not gonna go too deep dive inside what's the major difference between the self-managed versus the managed and what's the major situations you should go for the Fargate situations. So what we are trying to achieve here is we're going to use the combination for scheduling the pods on the self-manage as well as on the managed node groups and one of the managed node groups I'm going to put it on the spot instances. I am using the EKCTL for this demonstration. The similar steps can be followed in the Terraform which will be coming up in the next video. So as you can see on my VS code there is already a cluster configuration file has been created and you can see here there is a three node groups I have one of the node group is called node group one web and second is the node group two web and the third one is so when you don't provide any uh, manage information in front of the node group it's considered as a self-managed so the first from line 8 to 20 is a self-managed node groups which is managed by us while the managed node groups is managed by the AWS on the side and what I'm doing here is it's a very simple I'm just provided a design capacity to zero that because I don't want any uh, even a single M6i large instance to be up and running in the node group one web unless it's required while at the time of creation of this work node group I'm actually putting a design capacity of one and I'm just specifying the availability zone. You can also go for providing the availability zones, VPCs, subnets, whichever other information you like to provide. You can add a different tags in it and the taint and toleration for the node groups if you want to put your pods or the deployments workloads into a dedicated node group. Now in the managed node group, if you notice, there is a third node group which is called ng3web. Let's just first ch change the name to node group so that it becomes easier to read and what I've provided here I'm actually selecting a bunch of different instance types so I'm just using m6i large m5 large and m5 extra large on the support instances true and I'm again setting up the design capacity to minimum to one and I'm also setting the maximum goes to three and now the reason is because these two are the similar instance type but they are in a different availability zones so that's why I'm just putting a one AZs in each of them while in the sport instances because it's a dedicated node group and I just want if I'm running any test workloads on a sport instances I don't want them to be actually running out of availability or the spot instances cannot be launched so for that reason I'm actually recommending to go for and try to use all the availability zones in the US East too and here I'm just providing the name of my cluster and the region which I'm deploying it. So let's just save this file. For the first foremost thing we were going to do is check the AWS SDS get caller identity just to make sure we are connected with the right accounts with the right permissions. So I can see I'm actually using an IAM user not an IAM role and this user is currently an administrator role because this is my test account for the demonstration. So as we know, we can actually see here and I have also using K8 Lens. It's a pretty awesome tool to visualize and see every single of your workloads. So currently, if you see, there is no node is running and we can see the pods in all namespaces. Nothing is running and everything is pending. The reason is because I have scaled it down because I'm not using it. And it, bear in mind, AWS EKS might cost you some money if you're trying to perform certain actions with the heavy instances such as M6i large or a memory base or compute, uh, computer intensive base in, instances. So what we're gonna do now, we will firstly, uh, 
run the ekcdl get node groups information in the uist east 2 so let's just try to first print the information of all the node groups is already exist there it might be the chance when you're creating for the first time you don't have any of the node groups but since i have already created some node groups in the past and we can see here there is a three node groups one is called ng and one web ng2 web and ng3 web which is now we are actually creating a new node groups called node group one web node group two web and node group three web and we can see here is the min max capacity and the desired capacity is zero 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 while in the case of the managed node group is actually set to maximum one but currently it is zero and the desired capacity is set to zero and we can see clearly in the types of the which are the unmanaged ones so you can see the unmanaged one is these two while the managed one is this you can also actually see this all information from the cloud formation so if you just go here and find go to the cloud formation because behind the scene ekctl is trying to use the cloud formation and it's deployed all the node groups in the cloud formation stack so let's just go to the aws ek cloud formation stack and we can see here all these three different node groups creation and you can see clearly which family belongs to what and you can if you go to the resources you can also find about each resources has been created by this cloud formation stack all right let's come back to here and firstly what we're going to do try to scale up so that it can actually able to deploy the code ens so first we're going to do uh, we will rather than scaling up and down what i'm going to do i'm actually going to create three additional node groups with the node group one web node group two web and node group three web into the existing cluster and i'm just running the command called ekctl create node group and i'm providing the config file which is and then i'm providing the folder which is the shermio cluster and then i'm providing the cluster config.yaml make sure you are on the right path in your directory if i hit click it will take some time and it will able to deploy all of them while it is deploying all these three new node groups we can also see them in actions in here if you just reload after a little time you will see all the stacks we are started about to create so let's just see what they are trying to do here so we can see here currently it's trying to use and it's actually deploying two sequential tasks fix cluster compatibility two parallel tasks and creating the node groups node group one web creating node group two webs and creating the managed node group node group three web and if we go to the cloud formation hopefully it will start popping up so we can see now it's creating the all three different node groups where node group one and two are unmanaged or self-managed node group while the node group three is the managed node group so it will make me take four, two to three minutes to actually create all the stacks while this is taking the, some times what we will going to do let's just try to scale up so that at least my code DNS can be started up so let me um again listing the cluster information on the node groups so that i because i don't remember the node group names apparently i cannot do that because it's actually performing an action on the existing cluster which is this so i have to wait it right now all right i'm just going to pause the video for now and once it's completed i'll see you guys soon all right welcome back guys so i have just looked at it and it's all of three of them is finished and if i just go to my cloud formation stack i can see the status has been created completely which is a good news and we can also see straight away from the stack itself like the node group one and two are the unmanaged or self-managed node groups while the node group three is the managed node group and it's provided in the description itself since now all the three of the instances or the node groups are actually created and while the node group three is the spot instances page which have a three different types of instances types is provided and it also have the uh, uh, deploying in the all the availability zones so if we go to the launch template and if we look over there we're probably going to find out about the information for the managed node group for the three which is this one and if we look for here the versions and everything we can see every information because we didn't provide the tags but we can see the launch template information completely here and what we're going to do if we also go to the auto scaling group we can find out how 
how many of the node groups are created because you can ignore the first three because we created the last three one which is the node group 1a 1 1 2b and the node group 3 which is based on the your spot instances so let's go look for the node group 3 1 which is the managed node group and it's a spot instances base and we can see we have set up the min capacity is 1 maximum capacity is 3 and desired capacity is 1 and if we looked here that's the exact information which we have passed in our spot instances let's also go and see in the instances does the there is any creation of for the node group 3 with the spot instances so by default the EKCTL choose to create it m5 large among the m6i large or the m5 extra large and we can see from here itself this is a spot instances if we look for the life cycle of this instance so let's go and look for it so we can see the life cycle is actually the spot instances so we know this is a spot instance and it will not going to cost much of my money as compared to the on-demand instances while he also created the m6i large which is as we can see the life cycle is normal which is an on-demand instance and that will going to cost me a fortune to in order to keep using it and we let's see here on the cluster if you remember the last time when i shared the screen by connecting to the cluster we can see there was the core dns was in pending and we can see here currently the core dns and every aws nodes and the cube proxy is running completely fine by clicking on them you can also see whether it's deploying on the spot instances or it's actually deploying on the on-demand instances so let's just have a look for the core dns or any other instances so if we go to the console back and look for the instance IP address which is 192.168.066.209 and for the spot instance it's the 192.168.6351 and this is the instance ID and this is the host name so let's just look for the 160 host name so if we go to the notes and look for the host 160 we can see these are the pods which is actually is currently deployed on the on spot instances so now we know everything is working just for the test confirmation what we're going to do i'm going to do i'm actually going to create the nginx deployment and i'm going to scale it to 10 okay so first of all uh, i don't remember the exact deployment configuration or anything so what i'm doing i'm just running the cube ctl create uh, deployment and i'm just passing help command so that i can actually get the uh, creation for the shortcut and I'm just gonna run the nginx with replica 10 so let's just run and we don't have to worry about currently in the namespace because this is just for the demonstration the purpose of this demonstration uh, is to show you how you can actually run the managed and unmanaged node groups together with the spot instances in the all three availability zones for your application and now if I actually just run the create deployment and let's just change to 10 and if we go to the cube uh, Kate lens we can see all of the deployments for the nginx is coming up and all of them is started fine because I'm using a very high extra memory intensive uh, compute instance so it's, it doesn't have the problem of deploying all of them at once it might if it's have the issues with any scalability it will actually scale up and if we just go here and run the AWS get node groups and now we're gonna see all the six node groups where the three of them one the old ones and the three of them is the new ones which we just created we can also see the types and other information which we require to find out about the the node groups and all this information will be published here so we can see here the node group 3 is active and it is the type manage although I know the output looks a little blunder unless you have like a sorted out in a bigger screen or minimized and now that makes much better where you can see where the node group 3 web is actually active and we can also see it's actually having the main capacity maximum and the desired capacity is set to 1 and we can see which AMI, image AMI ID is using, what is the auto scaling group name, and the type is manage or unmanage. I hope you 
find this lecture or the videos very helpful uh, i'm trying to come up with more videos and solutions but sometimes i got busy so please support me and if you want me to provide more in-depth videos knowledge i'm happy to share it uh, that's it for now have a great day have a great weekend thank you so much for supporting me bye bye